Good morning from Vientiane, the capital of Laos. There's basically only a river at the edge of the city that divides Laos from Thailand. And there's one bridge going over to Thailand. And that's my next step to go to Thailand. And I will cross that bridge from Laos to Thailand. I'm really excited to finally visit Thailand. I've never been there. Vientiane is a pretty interesting capital city because it's the smallest and by far the smallest capital city of the whole of Southeast Asia. It has only 200,000 inhabitants, which makes it a really chill place and an interesting place with a lot of historical sites to visit, which I will do today. But before we will explore Vientiane, I want to address a really serious and important topic about Lao that really, really needs to be said because no one, and me myself also, I didn't know about this before I came to Laos, so yeah, really no one knows about it and it really, it's crazy. And it's a really important topic, I think, so if I would ask you the question, which country has been the country that got bombed the most in world history compared to its population size? If you would ask me this question, my answer would be maybe some country that has been involved in the Second World War maybe some country in the Middle East, but I would have no idea, basically. But in fact, Laos is the country that got bombed the most out of all countries in this planet in world history. Have you ever heard about that? Have you ever heard even about a war in Laos? I haven't. In Laos there was a so-called silent war that lasted from 1964 to 1973. During that time, the US Army bombed Laos with 580,000 flights and with more than 2 million tons or with 270 million bombs. And all of that bombing was going round the clock all the time. And if you do the math, it means that on average, every eight minutes for nine years, Lao got bombed by the US. Think about that for a minute. And until today, Lao and Lao people, especially civilians, are suffering from these bombings because about 30% of those bombs didn't detonate and are still laying somewhere in the landscape of Lao. An estimated 75 million bombs that didn't detonate are still laying somewhere in Lao and often the locals get injured or killed by these bombs. 98% of the victims are civilians and 40% of those are children. You can imagine running through the woods and playing and suddenly they step on a mine or step on a bomb and the thing explodes. It's just, just horrible. The US try to destroy the supply paths of their enemies in the Vietnam War. But by doing that, they destroyed the last two stable countries in the region at the time, Laos and Cambodia. Between 1993 and 2016, the US helped with about $5 million Laos to get rid of some of these bombs. But if you put it into perspective, the bombing of Laos cost about 13 million dollars every single day so this little bit of a help that the us gave lao is more of a joke all right i think that was really important to say and there's one more thing i wanted to say if you want to know what's really going on in the world and why things are really happening you should always thoroughly study the history of the most powerful nation at that time read between the lines study all different kinds of sources and you will always have an idea what's going on in this world and why things are happening and what are the things that the powerful people don't want you to know and what are the things they want you to think so yeah don't believe everyone don't believe anyone who says anything easily don't believe me do your own research and yeah become an aware citizen of this planet. So this area here is pretty much the center. It's, yeah, it's really amazing how chill this capital city is. As I said, only 200,000 inhabitants and also not that touristy like Bangkok. For me, it's still pretty touristy because I come from China and Iran and Pakistan, but still, yeah, it's 
all the people told me Vientiane is not touristy. So yeah, Vientiane seems to be not that touristy for normal people standards at least. Not for crazy people like me. <laughs> I think it's still a tourist hell but yeah, I can look over that and see the beauty in it and yeah, explore the beautiful things and don't mind the tourists. Now that's what I call a lift kit. <laughs> look at this car. It's insane. Oh my god, like it's a normal stock pickup truck and boom. <laughs> Someone wants to have the biggest SUV ever. Now I walked to the first thing I wanted to check out in Vientiane and that is Patuk Sai. It literally means Victory Gate. La was a former colony of France and this arch is dedicated to all of those who fought for the independence of Lao. The building also resembles the Arc de Triomphe in Paris but its design is traditional Lao style and it has four same size entrances and funny enough the cement used to construct this building was a gift from the USA because they had some cement left over because they wanted to build a runway for the Vietnam War but then they didn't need it anymore so they gave it to Lao and they built this arch with it. Pretty beautiful building and now I plan to head to a really really incredible temple and yeah see you when I'm there. Look at this insane cable mess over there. I bet this pole is gonna collapse soon from all the copper or all the wires, you know. This is crazy. Like, everyone seems to just put their cables anywhere. And if, if something would break, you know, I, I don't know how you would fix that again because you would never find your cable. It's pretty crazy. Look at this motorcycle, it's amazing. They have like a whole street food stand on the side of that. And they can drive around and you know change locations. How amazing is that? So now I'm standing in front of Tha Dat Luang. Tha Dat Luang, something like that. And it's a giant Buddhist stupa and it's gold covered and it's incredible, I have to say. It's huge, it's beautiful. Around here the area is very beautiful with parks and here a lot of green areas, silent, no cars, it's incredible. And this is one of the most important national monuments of Laos and a national symbol. Now I will take a walk to the Mekong which is the big river that divides Laos from Thailand and it's right at the border of the city and yeah I'm gonna check it out and see if I can find something beautiful on the riverside. Also something interesting I noticed, in the city way more people on the mopeds have helmets on and in the rural areas there's almost no one with a helmet on so yeah, pretty interesting but still this is like pretty much the center here and pretty chill, it's really really nice. Most of Vientiane is really green, it's really amazing just because the city is not that big so just everything is smaller, not that tall of buildings amazing. So by the way this behind me is the presidential palace. It reminds me a lot of the White House how it's built like in the middle of the city with the fences around and just the building itself. 
Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm almost at the river, so yeah, let's check that out. All right, so I made it to the river Mekong. Over there, it's going all the way over there. And I guess in the rainy season, this river stretches all the way to the, the boundaries here because there's still some water here. And yeah, right now it's the dry season, so the water level is a lot low, lower. And the amazing thing is on the other side of the river, we can already see Thailand. So I'm basically already in Thailand. I only have to, have to go like 20 kilometers over there. So see you next time when I finally enter Thailand. Again, a different country, new adventure, new hitchhiking. I don't know how it will go in Thailand. Yeah, I'm really excited and see you next time. Check this out, I just randomly found a Pakistani restaurant by a true Pakistani and there's like Indian and Pakistani food here and I got a yellow dal and a roti and yeah, I just had to get it and it's way more expensive than in Pakistan this, this together is like almost three dollars so that's an expensive meal for me but <laughs> yeah, I just I just miss the Pakistani food so much because it's the greatest food ever. So yeah, now I'm gonna enjoy that. So it's the next day and guess where I am? <laughs> I'm again in the incredible Pakistani restaurant. It's so delicious. Again, roti and some tarka dal. It's so delicious. I just, I'm so glad that I found this Pakistani restaurant here in Laos. It's amazing. Oh, it feels so good to eat Pakistani style again. This milk tea it tastes exactly like in Pakistan. <laughs> when I close my eyes here, for one second I can imagine that I'm back in Pakistan. I definitely have to come to Pakistan again. I will come to Pakistan again, don't worry. It's just the country is out of this world. There's a scale of best countries in the world. Pakistan is breaking the scale. <laughs> Look at this tiny bike. Isn't that just cute? <laughs> oh, incredible things. <laughs> 